Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India What we are going to do now is continue with our earlier discussion. So that is about the uh, noetherian decomposition ok. So you see let me again remind you what we are doing is we have uh, if you remember uh, that is the uh, uh, we, we looked at we took k to be an algebraically closed field and uh, we took uh, the affine space affine n space over k which is just k n uh, with the so called Zariski topology and what is the Zariski topology the Zariski topology is uh, uh, the topology for which the closed sets are given by uh, 0 sets of ideals and the ideals should be taken in the ring of polynomial functions in n variables over k uh, where the n is the same as this n ok. So uh, closed sets are also called as algebraic sets and they are just uh, of the form z of i where i inside the polynomial ring in n variables over k is an ideal. So this is a risky topology and then uh, we have seen that there is a you know there is a uh, there is already a dictionary between uh, the closed subsets uh, of A n and the ideals of uh, the polynomial ring. In fact if you want a, a perfect equivalence a, a bijective correspondence then on this side you should take closed subsets of A n on the other side you should take radical ideals in the polynomial ring okay the closed subsets correspond one to one with radical ideals and this correspondence is uh, inclusion reversing okay and uh, the larger the ideal the smaller the zero set of the ideal okay so the zero set of the ideal is simply the set of points in uh, kn the intervals of points which at which every function uh, every polynomial function in this ideal vanishes okay and uh, now the point is that we defined uh, we 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 uh, we check that this is a topology uh, on this space okay that is this definition uh, satisfies the axioms for closed sets of a topological space so uh, an becomes uh, uh, so kn becomes an with this topology which is called the zariski topology and uh, then i told you that uh, the beautiful thing is that there is a there is a algebraic geometry side there is a commutative algebra side the algebraic geometry side is the geometric properties of an and its subsets the commutative algebraic side is the jo the uh, the commutative algebraic properties of the ideals here okay and as a first result uh, what we showed last in the last lecture was that you know uh, the the uh, uh, the ideal i is prime if and only if uh, uh, or rather uh, the radical of i is prime if and only if z of i is an irreducible closed subset okay. So here when we defined uh, irreducibility if you recall irreducibility was a strong form of connectivity, connectivity okay and uh, 
whereas uh, for a set to be connected you require that it cannot be written as a disjoint union of two proper non empty closed subsets uh, the condition for a set to be irreducible is much more stronger the condition is that it cannot be written as a union not necessarily disjoint but of proper non empty closed subsets okay so uh, an irreducible set is of course uh, connected but the converse is not true and uh, irreducible sets satisfy all the nice uh, uh, properties that you uh, similar properties as connected sets okay um, and uh, so uh, the, the point was that uh, we, we called irreducible closed subsets of A n as affine varieties in A n okay and so let me write that uh, irreducible closed subsets of A n uh, are uh, called affine varieties in A n okay and uh, uh, so uh, the point is uh, uh, so of course the the advantage of studying uh, an irreducible closed set is that you have the additional property that it is irreducible okay and this irreducibility is a, a topologically a very nice property it is a property that is that is really nice in the sense that as I told you last time uh, for example uh, you can define irreducibility for any subset of a topological space first of all it is not necessary that you should define it only for closed subsets and the point is that if, if you define irreducibility for any uh, subset you will have to make the definition with respect to the uh, to the induced topology so you should say that the subset cannot be written as a uh, union of proper non empty closed subsets closed for the induced topology on the subset induced from the bigger topological space in which the subset is sitting okay and the the, the advantage of irreducibility is that uh, so let me mention some of them uh, well uh, if a set is if a subset is irreducible then its closure is also irreducible so adding the boundary which is the same as taking the closure is not going to take away the irreducibility then uh, if you take a non empty irreducible set uh, of course we by definition we always uh, require that an irreducible set is non empty because we declare the null set to not to be irreducible okay so well um, an irreducible set uh, 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 if it is non empty then it has a nice property that every open non empty open subset is dense okay and uh, in every non empty open subset is also irreducible therefore you know uh, in an irreducible space a non empty open subset will uh, will uh, is enough to test all the properties of the space which are which can which are going to be preserved uh, when you take closures that is when you take limits okay so uh, it is very important uh, to be able to test on a non empty open set okay and non empty open sets uh, are irreducible for an irreducible space okay uh, that is one nice thing then the other nice thing is of course that uh, um, uh, uh, any non empty uh, uh, any two open sets any two non empty open sets will intersect okay that will tell you that uh, the, the topology is uh, uh, not housed off okay when compared to the usual topology uh, for example if you take k to, to be complex numbers okay then the a n a n c which is c c to the n uh, c cross c cross c uh, n dimensional complex space uh, n dimensional uh, thought of as a vector space uh, c n is with the Zariski topology is not housed off okay that is because of this reason uh, because it is irreducible and uh, uh, the whole space is always irreducible please remember that is because the this corresponds to the 0 ideal and the 0 ideal uh, the 0 set of the 0 ideal is the is the whole space uh, and uh, the 0 ide ideal is of course prime because 0 ideal is uh, 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 is an ideal in a in an integral domain okay uh, in a in a in a commutative ring with unity which is an integral domain uh, the 0 uh, I mean uh, if you take a commutative ring with unity uh, the zero ideal is prime if and only if the ring is an integral domain okay so 
uh, this is always reducible okay. So any two open subsets of this will always intersect so it is highly non Hausdorff okay Hausdorffness uh, means that you give me any two points you can find open sets small enough such that they contain those two points and they do not intersect so this is highly non Hausdorff but still uh, uh, that that does not uh, deter uh, us from doing good geometry okay that is the point and uh, well uh, so and of course there are other nice things for example uh, the the continuous image of an irreducible, irreducible set is again irreducible is proved in this exactly the same way as you prove that the continuous image of a connected set is connected okay. So uh, irreducible uh, having a studying irreducible closed sets is of course very nice and of course from the uh, from, from the geometric point uh, point of view it is very nice and from the algebraic point of uh, from the competitive algebraic point of view also it is very nice because you are studying prime ideals okay but then the point is how do you get to an arbitrary closed set how do you how do you how do you study an arbitrary algebraic set okay. So the fact is that the, the answer to that is that these irreducible closed subsets which are the affine varieties they are the building blocks for the algebraic sets. So there is something called the Noe theorem de decomposition theorem which says that uh, any algebraic set any closed set in uh, an uh, affine in space over k uh, is writable as a union a finite union of irreducible closed subsets namely affine varieties and the union is uh, and this, this this decomposition is unique and uh, uh, if you if you assume that there are no redundant redundant redundancies that means that there is no uh, comp there is no component which is containing some other component in the union okay. So uh, now how do you prove that uh, the answer to proving such a theorem is the noetherian property okay. So last time I defined what is meant by uh, noetherian uh, 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 so uh, a n uh, uh, k is is a noetherian topological space so uh, let me quickly recall this so uh, I, and I again let me tell you the reason one reason for uh, this noetherian condition is to be able to say that any algebraic set can be broken down into a finite union of affine varieties and the finite union is this decomposition is unique if you assume that uh, there are no repetitions in the union okay of course unique up to permutation of the uh, pieces that occur okay. Uh, so if you want to study any algebraic set all you, uh, you since you can break it down as a union of uh, varieties it is just enough to study varieties and that is why we study only varieties okay that gives us some justification uh, as to why to study varieties and not just algebraic sets that is that is that is uh, part of the reason why uh, at least in a first course in algebraic geometry we study only affine varieties and I, I mean we study affine varieties to begin with and then uh, probably study projective varieties uh, but we do not study uh, uh, non, non irreducible closed sets okay we study only irreducible closed subsets because uh, general uh, non irreducible closed set can always be broken down like this. Um, so the key to showing that uh, any algebraic set can be broken down into uh, a finite union of affine varieties in a unique way uh, is uh, due to the fact that a n is a noetherian topological space. So if you so let me recall what I told you in the last lecture see the noetherianness of a topological space is the condition that the closed subset closed subsets of the topological space satisfy the so called descending chain condition that is uh, if you give me a descending chain of closed subsets uh, each one containing the next one okay uh, the uh, so the closed sets are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller then such a chain has to become stationary at some point that it has to become stable that means beyond a certain point uh, all the sets uh, occurring in that chain in the in the sequence they all have to be one and the same another way of saying it is that if you take a descending chain of closed subsets such that every at every step it is a proper containment okay you that means it is a strictly descending chain of closed subsets then that has to be only finite you cannot have an infinitely uh, you cannot have infinitely many uh, you cannot have an infinite chain of closed subsets which are becoming smaller and smaller strictly smaller one after the other, other okay. So this is the descending chain condition for closed subsets and this uh, this condition translates into 
the ascending chain condition for ideals in this polynomial ring that is because after all the closed subsets in the closed subsets in the affine space are they correspond to ideals in the polynomial ring okay and in fact if you want exact correspondence you have to uh, worry about radical ideals okay. But the fact is that uh, if you give me any ascending uh, and, and because the correspondence between the closed subsets of an and the ideals in uh, the polynomial ring is a inclusion, inclusion reversing correspondence the descending chain condition for closed subsets in the affine space will translate to ascending to an ascending chain condition on the I, on the ideals in the polynomial ring and uh, but the polynomial ring does have the ascending chain condition on ideals because it is a noetherian ring. So you see one of the definitions of, uh, of a noetherian ring is that uh, the standard definition is always that uh, it satisfies the ascending chain condition for ideals so that is in other words if you have a sequence of ideals becoming larger and larger and larger every ideal being contained uh, being contained in the next one after it then that has to stop at some stage it has to either become stationary or another uh, uh, which means that beyond a certain stage all the ideals should be one and the same in the sequence the other way of saying it is that if you have strictly increasing chain of ideals then it has to be just finite you cannot find an infinite sequence of ideals which are becoming bigger and bigger and strictly bigger and bigger and and, uh, and with this whole thing never coming to an end this cannot happen in a, in a noetherian ring. So the fact is that this is this is this is equivalent uh, equivalent to uh, to the fact that the polynomial ring in n variables uh, is a noetherian ring. And the, the and why is the polynomial ring in n variables uh, over k a noetherian ring? And that that's just because of Hilbert's basis theorem. That's just I mean noetherian theorem, which says that if you start with the ring, if you start with the commutator ring with one, if that commutator ring, ring is with one is noetherian, that is, for example, if it satisfies the ascending chain condition on ideals, then so does the polynomial ring in n variables over that ring. Okay. Now a field is always noetherian because uh, a field has only uh, two ideals one is a zero ideal one is a the other one is a full field which is unit ideal and therefore a field is always noetherian and therefore if you use Hilbert's basis theorem uh, uh, if you take a polynomial ring in finitely many variables over a field then that will also be noetherian and that is the reason why this is noetherian. So you see the the, top, uh, the the topological side on the topological space side the space a n is noetherian and on the commutative uh, that is on the algebraic geometric side at the level of topology the affine space is noetherian for the Zariski topology and uh, in the competitive algebra side the, the the ring of functions on affine space namely the polynomial ring that is an noetherian ring and these these just correspond to each other okay. Now um, now I was trying to uh, so I stated a theorem so this is a th this is the theorem that will let us to prove that uh, any algebraic set can be decomposed de into a union of uh, uh, affine varieties okay. So, so let me say re uh, recall that theorem and let me try to prove it. So, uh, so here is a theorem. Uh, uh, e if X is a noetherian topological space, then uh, then any closed subset any non empty closed subset y of x can be written uniquely uh, I should say can be written uh, let me explain what uniquely means rather let me can be written as y equal to y1 union y s okay uh, with uh, y with y i irreducible closed non empty uh, and and uh, this decomposition this decomposition uh, is unique up 
to a permutation of the y i's for if no y i uh, is a subset of some y j for j not equal to y ok. So, any non empty closed subset can be written as a finite union of uh, finite union of irreducible closed non empty subsets ok. So, each of these is irreducible it is closed it is non empty and this decomposition is called you can make it unique if you make sure that you, you do not have redundancies ok. So, for example if y1 is if you have y1 union y2 and so on and if y1 is contained in y2 then why put y1 you can throw throw out y1 because it is already there in y2. So, once you can write a decomposition like this you can always throw out uh, some of them which are contained in the others and finally you can arrive at a decomposition in which none of the uh, sets is contained in the others in any of the others such a decomposition is unique ok such a decomposition is unique and that decomposition is what is called as a noetherian decomposition ok. Now uh, uh, and the the y i s are called the irreducible components of y ok. Uh, so, each y i is called an irreducible component of y ok. So, uh, the decomposition this decomposition such a decomposition is called a noetherian decomposition and the y i are called the irreducible components they are called the irreducible components of y it is much similar to what you do in topology you take any in topology you define connectedness connectedness of a subset uh, ok and then you prove that any topological space can be written as a union of its connected components ok. In the same way uh, here you are saying that any uh, any topological space if you want any topological space to be written as a union of its irreducible components and you want that to be a finite union the condition you have to put on the topological space is that it should be no theory ok that is a nice condition and that condition is there for us for the affine space as we have already seen. So, if you believe this theorem you will immediately get that any algebraic set can be uniquely decomposed into uh, affine varieties in this sense ok. So, that proves the statement that we want alright. Um, so, so you have to prove we want to prove this it is pretty easy to prove. So, the uh, the point I want to say is that here we are going to use uh, uh, the various other definitions of uh, noetherianness of a topological space. So, you know uh, uh, the, the original def the for example, if you take a starting point the definition of a noetherian topological space that there is DCC for closed subsets that is there is uh, you cannot have a, uh, a strictly decreasing sequence of closed subsets uh, uh, one containing the next which is infinite ok. Then this is equivalent to also saying that <coughs> any non empty collection of closed subsets has a minimal element ok and that is also equivalent to saying uh, that any non empty collection of open subsets has a maximal element because the open subset is just you know uh, complements of closed subsets uh, in any topological space. So, uh, you know um, so, DCC for closed sets is the same as uh, uh, ACC for open subsets and uh, uh, DCC for closed subsets is the same as saying that any family of any non empty family of closed subsets has a minimal element and that is equivalent to saying that any non empty family of open subsets has a maximal element. So, this is these are all various avatars of uh, the definition of uh, uh, the no theoreness of a topological space ok and uh, it is not surprising because if you have seen this in competitive algebra or in algebra you know that uh, there are also several ways of defining uh, a ring to be noetherian 
one of course the standard way is to say that uh, uh, you know uh, it has ascending chain condition for ideals okay but then there are other equivalent conditions the the other uh, useful equivalent conditions are that every ideal is finitely generated okay uh, which is also a very very important condition uh, and so and the yet another condition is that given any uh, uh, non empty uh, collection of ideals there is always a maximal element uh, maximal with respect to inclusion okay so whenever we say maximal it is always if nothing is mentioned maximality is always with respect to inclusion as subsets okay and of course you know the uh, uh, each one has its own uh, each of these axioms has its own importance see for example uh, the the uh, while the ascending chain condition on ideals gives rise to the descending chain condition uh, for closed sets uh, the the fact that every ideal is finitely generated is also very important because that is what tells you that if you take any ideal okay uh, any ideal mind you if, uh, if you take any ideal and look at the zero sets <laughs> okay if you use the fact that uh, noetherianness means that every ideal is finitely generated it will tell you that you are whenever you are looking at the zero set of an, of an ideal you are just looking at the common zeros of a bunch of finitely many polynomials so you are not an ideal is always a non zero ideal is always going to be infinite okay there are going to be infinitely many elements in it okay so the point is that it looks like when i take the zero set of an ideal namely the all the points in the fine space which uh, at which uh, every one of the functions the ideal manage it looks like i am solving too many equations okay but it's not true in fact you are trying you are you are trying to find common zeros of infinitely many equations okay but that is not really true what is really happening is that you are only finding <coughs> the set of common zeros of only finitely many equations and why finitely many because those will be those finitely many equations for example uh, which generate this ideal and that is true because uh, the ideal is an ideal of a Noetherian ring and it is finitely generated. So you are always looking at uh, only finite ze common zeros of only finitely many polynomials and this finiteness is very is very very important because it allows you to do for example com cal calculations on the computer so if you have a if I want to look at the zero set of an ideal uh, then you know uh, I uh, look at zero sets I take the generators of the ideal and I first uh, look at the zero sets of the f the first generator and then intersect it with the zeros of the second generator and go on and I can have to do this process only finitely many times okay. So that is the reason why you can do computational competitive algebra which will help in algebraic geometry okay. So anyway so let me come back uh, so the point is that the property for noetherianness of no, uh, the, the noetherian uh, hypothesis on the topological space I am going to use is not the it is not ACC on closed subsets that I am going to uh, not DCC on closed subsets that I am going to use but what I am going to use is I am going to use the other equivalent definition that any non empty family of closed subsets has a mi has a minimal element okay so th so that is what I am going to use okay. So let us see how to use it so it is it is a very simple argument so what you do is uh, basically uh, you assume that there are uh, so you are you try to contradict the statement okay so what you try to say is you assume that uh, there is a subset which cannot be written as a finite union of irredu irreducible closed subsets okay then that is a specimen because that is that is that is that is something that contradicts this theorem okay uh, the point is that you should not show that you, uh, you that you should show that there is not even a single one like that okay now the point is what you do is you put all these specimens together in a subset and apply uh, the minimal the existence of a minimal uh, element for that subset okay that is the whole point so what you do is sub so let me write this let if possible if possible uh, let s script s uh, in b the collection of sub closed subsets of x uh, that cannot be written as a finite union of irreducible closed closed subsets if possible let script s be the collection of closed subsets of x that cannot be written as a finite union of irreducible closed subsets and s non, em non empty. So that means uh, you have to show that the 
this collection script as is empty namely you should show that there is no uh, closed subset that cannot be written as a finite union of irreducible closed subsets. So you go by contradiction what you do is you take script S to be a non empty collection of closed subsets which have which have a property which contradicts uh, the property of the theorem not even the, the stronger uniqueness of decomposition it contradicts even the existence of decomposition okay. So uh, so S is non empty now after all S is just a collection of closed subsets of the topological space X and X is no ethereum but you know no ethereum one, one equivalent uh, definition of the no ethereum condition is that given any non empty collection of closed subsets uh, it will always have a minimal element okay. So since uh, X is no ethereum uh, S has a minimal element say why not so so there is a so why not is a is a kind of smallest kind of uh, uh, subset irreducible uh, in smallest kind of uh, it is a uh, it is a closed uh, of course uh, non empty closed subsets I you will have to I mean you have you will have to be careful about this it should be non empty closed. because of course this decomposition is only being made for a non empty closed set okay. So uh, so there is a there is a minimal element which means that why not is a non empty closed subset why not cannot be written as the union of proper closed subsets and it is the smallest in the collection S smallest with respect to what with respect to inclusion of subsets which means that if there is an element of S. Uh, which contains why not I mean if there is an element of S which uh, which is contained in why not then it has to be equal to why not that is what minimality means minimality means that if there is some other thing uh, which is smaller than this then it has to be this okay fine now now you watch carefully since why not is uh, uh, since why not is uh, uh, in S the first observation is why not is not irreducible okay see because if why not is irreducible then why not can be written as why not the the fact that it cannot be written as a finite union of irreducible closed sets tells you that it cannot itself be irreducible because if it is irreducible then it is itself uh, when I say union this union can be just one okay. So what you must understand is the elements of the script S by definition they are all not irreducible so what happens is why not is not irreducible okay note that why not is not irreducible why not is not irreducible okay now but then what does it mean why not can be broken down into two uh, as a union of two proper non empty closed subsets okay so so why not so let me continue here so why not is equal to y01 union y02 where y01 y02 are proper non empty closed subsets of why not okay why not is not irreducible so it is reducible so it can be broken down as a union of two proper non empty closed subsets but now watch y01 is an is a closed set which uh, which is smaller than why not and y02 is also smaller than why not so y01 and y02 cannot belong to script s see y01 is a proper subset of why not and it is a non empty closed set and y02 is also similarly a non empty proper closed subset of y0. So these two closed subsets cannot belong to script S because if they belong to script S they will contradict the minimality of y0, y0 is supposed to be the smallest okay. So the fact that y0 and, and y02 do not belong to script S 
means that they can be written as a finite union of irreducible closed sets and if that is true then why not also can be written as a finite union of irreducible closed sets namely you just take the union of the irreducible closed sets uh, the finite union of irreducible closed sets that that gives y01 and take also the finite union of irreducible closed sets that gives y02 put them together you uh, that will tell you that y0 becomes uh, writable as a finite union of irreducible closed subsets and but that's not possible because y0 is supposed to be in script s so this contradiction tells you that script s has to be empty and this argument finally tells you that every reduce every closed subset non empty closed subset is necessarily writable it can necessarily be broken down into finitely many irreducible closed subsets okay so this gives you the existence of a decomposition not without the uniqueness we will get the uniqueness next okay so let me write that down uh, since y01 y02 are proper closed subsets of y0 y01 y02 do not belong to the collection but then y01 and y02 and hence y0 is writable as a union of non empty of finitely many non empty uh, irreducible closed subsets which contradicts y0 belongs to the family thus the family is empty in other words every uh, every non empty closed subset is certainly writable as a union like this of non empty proper uh, of non empty irreducible closed subsets okay um so thus any uh, non empty irreducible sorry non empty closed subset y can be written as y equal to y1 ys with every yi non empty closed irreducible of course whenever i say irreducible it's automatically it's automatic that it's non empty because we have we have we have barred the null set from being taken as irreducible okay so now of course if some yi is contained in some other yj you can throw that you can throw the yi out so you can assume without loss of generality that no yi is contained in any other yj okay and then what the theorem says is that uh, with that assumption this decomposition is unique that's what we're going to prove next okay so uh, if some yi uh, is contained in another in yj for j not equal to i we can we can uh, we can uh, 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 exclude that y i uh, from the union thus we may assume that y i is not contained in y j for i not equal to k that is the 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 union is uh, uh, is not uh, redundant okay this you can assume is obvious the point is that once you assume that this decomposition becomes unique okay that's what we're going to prove next so let me do that 
so let me write that down uniqueness of decomposition so uh, let me write a lemma i'll use a small lemma if uh, uh, is it uh, is contained in z1 union z2 union z r where z is irreducible uh, uh, then uh, z is contained in uh, uh, z i for some i Um, just a moment. I will also need that all the z i's are. Uh, let me assume that z is. Uh, let me assume z is closed and all the z i's are also closed. Uh, uh, where z i are it are are closed uh, and z is reducible. Uh, then z is contained in z i for some i that is correct yeah. So, if a s if if you if you have a irreducible if you have a union of uh, closed sets finite union of closed sets and if there is a set which is contained in uh, irreducible set which is contained in the finite union of closed sets okay then if it is irreducible it has to go into one of them. Uh, so, the proof is well you see uh, I mean you just have to use the uh, uh, see uh, the, the, the condition uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the condition given means that we that z is actually you know z intersection z1 union z intersection z2 union z intersection zi zi zr okay because if you intersect uh, z is contained this in this union so z intersect that union is z but z intersect that union is just z intersect each member of the union and then you take the union so because the intersection distributes over the union okay so that is what it means and notice that each z intersection see see since uh, z, z i are closed uh, in the ambient topological space the big topological space therefore z intersection z i is closed in z okay so uh, the each each z intersection z i is closed in z okay that is very clear because uh, that is what induced topology means induced topology means induced topology in a subset is that uh, a subset of that subset is closed if that subset uh, uh, which you are ca claiming to be closed is supposed is gotten by intersecting with a closed set in the bigger space okay. So, z1 any z i is closed in the big topological space therefore its intersection with a subset is closed in that subset okay fine then the, the other thing is that of course you know uh, 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 I can in this union I can simply forget uh, uh, if some z intersection z i is empty okay. So, uh, if some z intersection z i is empty uh, I do not write it at all. So, I can uh, assume no z intersection z i is empty uh, or rather is non empty for every i. I mean if it is empty just forget that uh, forget that uh, index and re re index you will get a lesser number of indices okay. So, uh, after this assumption maybe this r will come down it might come down to a smaller number okay but let us not uh, it is not really one is not really worried about what that smaller number is one is only worried about that it the fact that it is finite okay. 
then the other thing that you must understand is if uh, some z intersection uh, uh, so you see if some z intersection z i is uh, 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 is equal to z then we are done because if some z intersection z i is z then you are just saying that z is contained in z i all right so uh, we are done Is it is it is contained in Z i? All right. So uh, if if some Z intersection Z i is equal to Z, then you're done. Okay. If not, if if uh, if suppose suppose uh, 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 Z intersection Z i is is properly contained in Z for all i. This is the other possibility. We have to show that this possibility does not occur. Okay. We have to show that this possibility does not occur, and the only possibility that occurs is Z intersection Z i is Z for some i, and therefore Z is contained in Z i for some i. That's the that's essentially the lemma. Okay. Now suppose Z intersection Z i is 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 proper subset of Z. So what it will tell you is that you have broken down Z into a finite union of non-empty proper closed subsets. Now that's not possible. Because Z is, uh, that's because Z is irreducible. Okay, the irreducibility says that you cannot break it down into a union of two proper non-empty closed subsets, but you can extend it to finitely many. The reason is because you see, uh, suppose I have this this condition. What I can assume is that uh, I can also assume that Z is not contained in uh, any uh, union of a sub-collection of the Zi's. So in other words I am saying that you can also assume without loss of generality that uh, uh, you know Z is not in the uh, union of uh, say for example you throw out Z1 it is not in this union <coughs> because if it is in this union I would work with this. So try to make sure that Z is not it is not it is not contained in any smaller union a union of uh, uh, subset proper subset of the collection of all these Zi's. You can assume that. Okay, assume that Z we can in fact we can we can assume. Uh, so let me rewrite this. We may assume that Z is not contained in uh, Z i 1 union Z i uh, L for a subset a proper subset <coughs> i 1 etcetera i L of 1 2 etcetera R you assume that okay. So you can assume that otherwise if there is a pro if there is a if there is something like this then work with this call this subset as 1 through replace this collection with that subset and and you and what you will do is you will keep on reducing to a stage until you will you will come to a point where you get a collection like this <laughs> okay that is z is contained in the union okay. Uh, uh, Z intersection Z i is uh, proper subset of Z for every i, and Z is not contained in any smaller union. <laughs> you'll come to a stage like that. Okay. Now you have to say that's not possible. <laughs> you see, then you see you will have Z is equal to Z union Z one union Z union Z two Z union Z r. I'll break it down like this. See this is <coughs> this is non-empty closed proper okay and uh, this guy uh, oh, oh sorry these are all intersections I have been care I am a little careless yeah. So this is if you look at it both of these guys here are non-empty closed proper. 
so what i have done is i have broken an irreducible set into two pieces which each of which is non empty closed proper that's a contradiction to the irreducibility of z so this can never happen therefore the only thing that can happen is that z has to be in zi for some time okay so this implies uh, z i is it not irreducible and that implies uh, that uh, that implies a contradiction which proves the lemma so your lemma is proved so the the moral of the lemma is that if an irreducible set is contained in a union of close finite union of closed sets it has to go into one of them in other words you, you it cannot fall into two pieces in in a union it has to go exactly into one of them okay now um now uh, i let's apply that let's apply that to the uniqueness of decomposition so let me go back here um okay so let me go back here now assume now let uh y equal to y1 union etc y s and let that also equal to y1 prime union y Yes, y prime s prime with uh, every y i y prime j uh, uh, irreducible irreducible closed of course non empty okay what do you have to prove you have to prove that s is equal to s prime and you have to prove that every y i is some y prime j for a unique j okay so uh, of course you know uh, as uh, and uh, and of course you are assuming that there are no re redundancies y i is not contained in y j for i not equal to j uh, uh, y prime uh, y prime um, uh, oops y prime i is not contained in y prime j for i not equal to j <coughs> but of course here the ijs are indices from 1 to s prime and here the ijs are indices from 1 to s okay that is uh, to show s equal to s prime and uh, uh, each y i is uh, precisely some y j uh, y prime j okay that is what you have to show so and how do you do that it is it is very very simple you see so let me first state it in words I am going to use that lemma take y1 now y1 is a sub of this union so it is a sub of this union okay now the lemma the lemma says that the set y1 I do I do not need the fact that y1 is closed I only need the fact that y1 is irreducible y1 is contained in a union of finite union of closed sets therefore it has to be in exactly one of them it, it is contained in at least one of them not exactly it is contained in at least one of them so if I apply the lemma I will get that y1 is contained in some y prime j okay now again apply the lemma to y prime j that y prime j is contained in all the union of the yis and that y prime j is irreducible therefore y prime j is contained in some y uh, uh, j prime okay so if you write this down you will get that uh, y1 is equal to y prime j uh, you will get y1 is equal to y prime j so by since so let me write that since y1 is contained in the union of y i primes we have by the lemma just using the fact that y1 is irreducible that y1 is contained in y prime j for some j okay similarly since y prime j is contained in the union of yis we have since y prime j is irreducible that y prime j is contained in some y 
let me I do not want to use k but let me use uh, l if you want okay. So, so you will get y 1 is contained in y prime j which is contained in y l okay. So, finally you get y 1 is, con y one is contained in y l but you are not supposed to have that because the y a's are all uh, uh, they are non redundant this is none of them is contained in the others. So, what this will tell you is that l equal to 1 l has to be 1 and that, that will tell you that y 1 is equal to y prime j this implies l equal to 1 that is y 1 is equal to y prime j okay. Now the point is you renumber all these okay you renumber all these guys so that you call y that y prime j call that as y prime 1 and the fact is that you can now strike off from the union the y 1 and the y prime 1 the fact that you can strike off uses this topological fact that any non empty subset of a irreducible uh, set is dense okay. So I mean the fact is that if you take this union okay and you throw out y1 okay you will get an open set because what you have thrown out is a closed subset okay because you are taking a complement if you if th removing y1 from this union is like taking the complement uh, of y1 in y that is a complement of a closed set okay so it is open but it is not <laughs> if it is non empty then it is tense so if I take y1 out and take the closure I will get the union of the other pieces because what I have taken out uh, uh, when I take y1 out from y I am taking out also y1 from y2 through ys okay. So what I will get is essentially uh, a subset of y through to ys okay and what I have thrown out from each of the y2 to ys is a closed subset it is a proper closed subset okay. Therefore whatever that is left out if I close it up I will get back y2 through ys. So in other words from this union if I take out y1 and if I close it up what I will get is y through to ys. So this is you can think of this as a cancellation property okay. So uh, uh, well so let me write that or rather that leads to a cancellation property. So let me write that out just a couple of more lines then we can wind up. Uh, so let me write that down uh, 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 renumber re relabel or re index the y prime k uh, the y prime l uh, so that uh, y prime j is y prime 1 okay that y prime j which we got to be equal to y1 call that as y prime 1 renumber it okay. Then uh, y is equal to y1 union y2 union ys and that is also equal to y1 prime union y2 prime union y y prime s prime okay and uh, you know uh, uh, the point is that this is the same as y1 is equal to y1. this is y1 okay and now what I want to say is that if you I want to say that this implies that uh, y2 union ys is actually equal to y1 I mean y2 prime union y prime s prime which is like you cancel off uh, the y1 that is on both sides of the union and the this cancellation property is actually because of the irreducibility property okay that any non empty open subset uh, of an of an irreducible space is dense <coughs> and in fact actually this is equal to y minus y1 closure in fact you take this union from that union you remove y1 okay what you get will be an open subset of y through to ys and it is a non empty open subset of y through to ys uh, 
uh, therefore, if its closure will be y through to y s. Because in each piece, the uh, the the elements, for example, in y two that you have removed, which are common with y one, you will get an open subset of y two. If I close that up, I'll get my y two back. That's because this open subset that I've removed, I mean, this closed subset that I've removed is the common elements between y one and y two, and that's not the whole of y two because n no y i is contained in some other y j. So if I remove y one from y two and close it up I will get back y2. So in the same way from this whole thing if I remove y1 which is equivalent to removing the intersection of y1 with each of these pieces and and then close it up I will just get the union of these other two pieces the other pieces and now what you can do is you can continue the induction you can next strike off y2 and y2 prime okay I mean you can strike off y2 and some other y prime j okay because they will be equal by the same argument and that y prime j can be renamed renum relay re index so that you get that y prime j becomes y prime 2 okay then you can strike that off and you can keep on doing this and this process has to end finitely and when it ends it you you cannot this s has to be equal to s prime because if it is not if s is less than s s prime then at some point you will get a null set here equal to a set there which is not empty and if s is greater than s prime at some point you will get a null set on the right side which is equal to a uh, uh, non empty set on the left side. So uh, this argument can go on it can go on only finitely many times and the fact that you cannot uh, uh, you cannot have a non empty set equal to an empty set it will it will force that yes has to be equal to s prime and uh, every y i is uh, unique y j y prime j okay. So continue continuing as before uh, we find that y2 is equal to uh, y prime j for some j renumber re index y prime j as y prime 2 and uh, we get uh, after cancelling of y prime 2 that you will get y3 union ys is equal to y prime 3 union y prime s y prime s prime and uh, by induction we will end with s equal to s prime and uh, y s equal to y s prime okay, that will be the end of the proof okay. So finally uh, you get this uh, uniqueness of decomposition okay so uh, so the moral of the story is that uniqueness of no decomposition uh, and the noetherian decomposition itself holds for a noetherian topological space and the nice thing is that it holds for a fine space and therefore any uh, irreducible uh, any any uh, closed subset of a fine space namely any algebraic set is a finite union of fine varieties uh, and these affine varieties are unique if you assume that the the union is non redundant that is none of them is contained in any of the other and this is called the noetherian decomposition of a closed subset okay. So this tells you uh, partly why uh, it is worthwhile to study affine varieties rather than just studying algebraic sets because the affine varieties are building blocks for any algebraic any algebraic set is can be decomposed into affine varieties. So the affine varieties are the building blocks uh, for uh, uh, for our algebraic sets and in fact it is a true it is true also in the, in the widest generality of algebraic geometry in the most sophisticated language of algebraic geometry it is the affine pieces that are the building blocks the most general uh, object in algebraic geometry the most sophisticated object is called a scheme and uh, the definition is that it is built up uh, by the building blocks which are called affine schemes and this is the uh, this is the philosophy the affines are like the bricks that make up the whole building okay they are the building blocks okay. So I will stop here.